time to talk about a take, okay, everybody? Now, I may have mentioned this take to you already, which is I said, should therapists replace religion? Here we go. This is a post by a, a relatively popular poster by the name of Sid, aka at Little Baby Gandhi. And uh, they said, Therapy has stripped religion of any remaining utility. Stop finding God and start finding a therapist to help you grapple with the despair that arises from being alive. Hmm. Now, there's a lot of ways that we can approach this. And I would like to, even though we're using this and crediting this, this like sort of Twitter take, as you, as you can see, by the way, the reason why we're talking about this via this take uh, 794 quote retweets. That is a lot of strong opinions about this particular take. Um, so as you can tell, <laughs> it got a little bit big. I don't feel particularly bad talking about this particular take. Um, now to some degree, I think this take was probably worded a little bit like bait. You know what I mean? Saying that therapy has stripped religion of any remaining utility is a pretty bold statement to say. Sid is an extremely obnoxious as an anti-theist. Literally every stereotype about them that religious people have. I say this as a religious person. As a base pagan, I resent anti-theism. I think a lot of people, and then somebody, uh, Aaron says, I think a lot of people participate in religion for the community and therapy sadly would not replace that. I agree with you. This is an interesting take. And let me talk about a couple of things that make this take so interested to me. Okay? So, first off, many of you know, and some of you I'm sure don't know this, but I grew up in a far-right, uh, extreme Christian cult. Okay? Um, I have a video up on my channel, um, which I think is under the... There we go. There's a video that is just linked in my chat. I will link it also for the YouTube people who want to watch it. This is one of the videos that I'm most proud of. Um, this is a video called Demon Mama's Spiritual Destru Destruction. Or, <laughs> Destruction. Deconstruction. So, this video is, it's a walk back through what I, the religion that I grew up in. And also, um, um, but, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, this is a video in which I go and talk about my experience growing up in a cult. I talk about a lot of my views on religion and why I have kind of complicated views on religion. Um, I think it's a really good video. I'm very proud of it. It's a long video, but I think you'll find it very interesting. Um, so with that being said, I grew up in a cult. I grew up in an extreme right wing, extremely Christian cult, and it was not a very good experience, as you can probably guess. Um... And so as a result, uh, I have a lot of critiques of Christianity and religion in general. And I've talked about them many times on my stream. In fact, um, when I was a little bit younger, I was a pretty insufferable anti-theist, which is to be a little bit understood. And I tried not to ever um, be insufferable about it, but the truth is I was insufferable at times. Um, the truth is, though, there are a lot of criticisms about religion that I have not moved on at all. Um, for example, I think that religion preys on uh, sort of mystical thinking. I think it encourages um, a lack of critical uh, of critical thought. I think that it often encourages people to um, stop asking questions instead of asking questions that might help them to live more li uh, uh, more liberated lives. I think that um, religion is often incredibly coercive and works in cooperation with states um, to uh, impose imperial, generally imperial uh, cultures on others. For example, the way the Catholic Church was literally directly involved in the conquest and colonization of the world. Um, I think that religion often engages in this. I think that a lot of times there is a sort of uh, almost medieval uh church and state alliance that is is rarely ever open but is always present so for example every single time that there's a republican in office uh christian legislation inevitably gets pushed 
And it just so happens that all of the big donors for both of the parties are mostly Christians because America is a nation full of Christians and one half of of the uh of the uh of the political divide is so christian you can't even believe it um so there's a lot of critiques of religion that uh i regularly levy and that i engage in all the time and in fact on this channel we make fun of christianity specifically if specifically fundamentalist christianity quite frequently and i think that's very justified i think there's a lot of uh things that are uh, justifiably made fun of with regard to, um, religion. Um, however, when it comes to this take, I think there's some things to be talked about. Okay. Therapy has stripped religion of any remaining utility. Stop finding God and start finding a therapist to help you grapple with the despair that arises from being alive. Hmm. So the first thing I want to talk about with regard to this take, the idea that a therapist can be a replacement for organic, a, an organic social network is so disgustingly unhealthy. It is so unhealthy. Okay. So this has nothing to do with religion versus therapy. But the idea that you can just replace the need for a social life by occasionally or, or, or a social net or social engagements or a community, the fact that you, the idea that you can just not have a community and can instead replace that with a therapist is really inaccurate and extremely reductive. Um, yeah, it's a lot of pressure to put on a therapist, first of all. But secondly, that's not even what therapists are supposed to do. Therapists are supposed to help you address very specific, um, you know, mental struggles or emotional struggles that you're dealing with. They're not supposed to replace uh, a social need. They really aren't. You're not like like therapists aren't paid friends. A therapist is somebody who's supposed to with a certain level of um, of emotional distance help you sort through issues in a controlled environment where nobody else can tamper with you there is a lot of good things that can come from therapy i have benefited greatly from therapy at certain times in my life and there are other times in which i haven't um but therapy's main value is that you can sit down in a quiet room where no one else is listening to you and have a private uh Con con uh, conversation with an informed individual who wants to help you. That is awesome. That is a good thing. I think it's great that people can seek that thing out. And I, again, I myself have found value. Now that doesn't mean that all therapy is the same or that the entire, the, all of the undermine, or, uh, sorry, all of the underlying philosophies that go into modern therapy are good because God knows that's not entirely true. And we're going to talk about that. But I think one of the things that this tweet fails to address is the fact that religion is not just a belief. It's not religion is not just a, a, a person having a belief. Rhodes says, if I'm reading this right, the steel man of this is to is assuming they mean like going to confessional or trying to get therapy from your pastor, right? Yes. However, I mean, that is the steel man of the argument. However, I don't think that's what's being presented here. Keep in mind that uh, therapy has stripped religion of any remaining utility is a broad statement of all utility of religion. This, this statement was not even, this was not like tailored to just discuss counseling, religious counseling. And I think that's one of the areas where this take runs into some issues. I've talked about this before on my channel that the reason why right wingers have uh, like right wingers have such incredible political tenacity in certain areas is because the churches are ingrained in their politics and churches meet needs churches even bad churches even terrible cults like the one that I was in meet certain needs. 
the church that I grew up in, the reason people went to that church wasn't because they're stupid Christians. They went there because they needed other people. They needed, maybe many of them needed food and clothes. They needed support. They needed help. Many of the people who went to my church were women who had multiple kids and were stressed and couldn't take care of their kids all the time. And they needed to know that there were other people that they could trust. A, a Sunday school so they could take their kids to Sunday school so they could go work their job. Um, finding, tr you know, finding trustworthy other people who can, ha who your kids can hang out with. M m social, physical needs were being met by the church. And that is something that happens for multiple religions, not just Christianity. Um, uh, 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 Hindu people, Buddhist people, uh, Jewish people, uh, uh, and Christians, of course, all go to congregations to meet social needs, and they often find a lot of happiness in those in that. You see what I mean? So they they seek out a social need, and the churches welcome them. And yes, I agree that many, if not most, churches and a lot of religion is very manipulative. But the reason why it's effective is because they know they're meeting a social need. They're giving people community which humans need they're giving people sometimes food and clothes which are basic physical needs so i think that's one of the things that is ignored by this tweet um but there's another aspect of it okay and this is a this is a little bit of a of a of a this is gonna, this is where it gets complicated okay so uh, just a little bit before, I sort of briefly mentioned the way that the church and government is entangled. And in truth, it's actually more than government. It's religion, churches, government, and society are all very entangled. And they're very entangled specifically, extra specifically, here in the United States. And also in a couple of other countries like some some prominent examples being Saudi Arabia, a religious monarchy, Canada, a religious. No, I'm just kidding. Canada is technically a religious monarchy, but we know that they have some sort of democratic process. OK, um, but um, and there's there are ways that you can observe how these things um, function. OK, so let's talk about this. Right. Let's say. Let's say that you are a medieval peasant, okay? Let's no, let's take it one step further. Let's say you are a gay medieval peasant, okay? And you go and you're like, "Oh my god, I know I'm not supposed to be gay. I feel bad about this because everybody in my life tells me I need to keep it a secret." And I'm going to go talk to my priest. I'm going to go talk to my minister and I'm going to go you know, get counseling for this thing that's troubling me. Um, and you go and in and in secret silence in the confessional booth, you confess to your pastor that you've been having gay urges. Now, your pastor it tells you that he's there to help you and he might actually help you. Your pastor might have fed you when you were hungry. Your pastor might have counseled you when you had a family member die. Your pastor might have sung songs with you at the funeral of, of your loved one or, or helped you work in the fields. You might have genuine social connections. But let me ask you, what is their goal when they advise you whether you should act on or be gay? What are they going to tell you? Well, you know what they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you that that's a sin and that you shouldn't act on it. And why is it a sin? Well, it's not really a sin because God said no. There's not really any concrete area of the Bible where God explicitly prohibits men from being with other men. But interestingly, in medieval times, you might notice that uh, there's some politics going on, right? Kings have peasants. Peasants work the land and staff the armies. Peasants need to have children so that the land can keep being run and tilled and so that the armies can keep being staffed, which means 
they want you to reproduce, which means they don't want you to undermine the order. And being gay is deviant. And deviance takes or things out of the intended order of the kings. Now, this is a simplified uh, schema, but you can see how the family structure, heteronormativity, is not just a product of um, not just a product of like random prejudice, but rather is a product of power, a power of control. It is a, a product of pursuing power. The king needs families to reproduce. The king needs peasants and soldiers to have children, and they can't be doing that if they're gay. They can't be doing that if they're, um, if, if there's, uh, undermining of the way things have been. Because keep in mind that kings also rely on divine right to their claim to power. So you see how this is starting to get tangled up. And all of a sudden, you can't trust that priest anymore. Can you? Because maybe you're genuinely dealing with whether or not you want to be gay. Maybe you have the, maybe the cute blonde butcher boy is your boyfriend and you want to marry him. You want to run away with him and become uh, an outlaw. But if you go to the person that you trust, they're going to tell you not to do that. Why? Because it would not be good. Maybe it would be sinful. Maybe they'll tell you it's sinful, but maybe they don't. Let's, let's give them credence. Let's say this priest is, is a little bit less discriminatory. And he says, well, it's sinful, but also, do, do you really want that life? Everyone will look down on you. Everyone will, will treat you poorly for being gay. Do you really want that life? Do you want a life where everyone looks at you like that? How are you ever going to get work? How are you going to be respected? That's the second thing they'll often say. And then you go, God damn, I don't know if I can trust this person I'm supposed to trust. I don't know who I'm supposed to turn to when the person that society gave me as a guide is clearly not guiding me, but is pushing me into a specific order. Do you see what I'm getting at? Does all this make sense? Is everybody following? I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Um, I hope that makes sense. What I'm trying to say is that there is an entanglement of political forces and advice. If you seek a king... A king is going to is not going to advise you to do something that undermines their power. Likewise, the church is not going to advise you to do something that undermines its power. And this brings us to therapy. Okay. So, therapy. Now you might think, well therapy is nothing like going to church. You don't have to sing, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to, you know, give them, I mean, you do have to give them money if you live in America, um, <laughs> hilariously, um, but it's very different, right? So let's talk about the future, okay? Let's say you are a gay working class individual in the modern day, and you're like, huh, I feel like, no matter what I do, I am discriminated against for being gay. I am discriminated against for, uh, for all of these things. And I hate working. And I hate it. And it makes me depressed. And, and I don't ever want to go into work. And I fear it. And so you start having, you know, maybe PTSD episodes. Maybe you go to work and you just can't find yourself working anymore. You, you go into work and the discrimination is terrible and you're like, fuck, I, I don't like doing this anymore. I've come to hate work. I don't want to work anymore. And you go and you try to talk to your therapist about that. How different do you think the therapist advice is going to be than the medieval priest when it comes to that particular topic? Interesting, isn't it? Because if you go to a, a, a therapist, now a therapist doesn't ha necessarily have any problem with you being gay. 
but therapists have a goal. And a therapist's goal is to help you become functional. In fact, many people will talk about this, that the goal of, of therapists is in a lot of cases to make you feel good enough to go back to work. In fact, have, as somebody who's been in therapy, that is what a lot of therapy focuses on. If you're unwell and you can't work, they will focus on getting you work. Even if it is advice that isn't good for you. So that's a little bit weird, isn't it? The idea that even now, the sort of societally acceptable counselors have things that they will not counsel you on, even if it would technically be best for you. Hmm. So let's return to the tweet. Okay? Therapy has stripped religion of any remaining utility. Stop finding God and start finding a therapist to help you grapple with the despair that arises from being alive. The despair that arises from being alive. Do we think that it's despair from being alive? Is that really what it is? Or is there something being ignored here? Hmm? What is it that makes people despair? I would say there's a lot of things that make people despair. One of the things that make makes people despair is, well, as it turns out in America, one of the primary things that makes people despair is financial issues. Financial issues, being overworked, spending too much time at work and not being able to spend time with their family, discrimination, workplace discrimination, not being able to find a job. These are things that that cause people despair. And if you take that to a therapist, that therapist, even if they really have your best intentions at heart, they're taught to help you become functional because of the way society is structured, because of our culture, they're going to tell you to go get a job. They are going to help you get a job. They are going to help you become a productive member of society. Well, that sounds a lot like what we were just talking about with the priest, doesn't it? A lot, doesn't it? The priest telling you, don't go run away with the butcher's boy because then you won't be able to have kids because then you won't be able to till the land because then the Lord will get invaded by another Lord. Hmm. How odd. Very curious. So, this tweet is interesting to me because I don't think that's a great trade out, believe it or not. I don't really see much difference in one, ther one guide, the you know, societally acceptable guide, telling you, um, telling you to do things for the good of society and another uh, societally acceptable guide telling you uh, what to do for society. In fact, the way that this is presented to me, and I'm not saying anything about the person who made this tweet. I'm sure they have great thoughts and whatever, but the way this tweet was presented, it almost acts, it, 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 it lays bare the fact that religion is being just swapped out with, ther with therapy. And that in some ways, therapy has some of the same problems that religion does, which is that the overall arc, the underlying ideology and philosophy that is there can affect the outcome and the value for you. And I think that's an interesting thing to think about because I don't know that we would be better off, uh, uh, much of a better off society, if people started treating therapists as they're the source of solution for their despair. In fact, I know for a fact that because everybody has to pay for therapy, that most people would simply not have anyone because lots of people can't afford a therapist, literally. And that also points a little bit to the classism of our society. You know, you know what? Everybody had access to a priest back in the day. You went to your local parish and you had a priest. You don't get access for sure to a therapist. Now, I'm not saying that it's better, for sure, or that it's worse. Or Yeah, I'm not saying that it's worse now. I'm just saying that certain aspects of our current society...
pretty openly lay bare the classism of our current existence. In medieval society, you were ruled by kings, but hey, you had a local counselor. So, there's a couple of issues with the idea of just replacing quote-unquote religion whole cloth with a therapist. And also, I think that there's a big philosophical uh, and political issue with pointing at therapy as a sort of uh, fix-all issue. It's very weird, isn't it, that our society basically says, yes, society sucks and you will need a therapist to survive in it but we shouldn't save society. You should just go to your therapist. Isn't that kind of fucked up? The idea that like, no, no, no. We all acknowledge that society is, is causes despair, that the way that we live our, live our lives is causing us ex extreme despair. Just go to therapy, five head. Hmm. I find that answer doesn't fit, sit well with me. And in fact, it seems very weak. And in fact, this is where it's going to get really weird. Okay, everybody? Ready? I understand why conservatives would get mad at this. Why religious people would get mad at this. Can you imagine that if you're a, a believer in a religion and you go to church and people are loving to you and whatever and they and you know, maybe you're uh, maybe you just fit in. We're not we're not counting the gay person. Because obviously gay people don't have a good time in church. But let's just say you're, you you sort of fit the demographic. You're a white Christian and you go to church and church is real good. And then some liberal rolls up on you and says, <laughs> get rid of, get rid of your religion and go get a therapist. And you go, why would I do that? Why would I stop going to the place where I have social engagement, where people give me food when I need it, where people help me with my house when I need it, where my wife, um, if when I go to the hospital, a bunch of people come together and cook meals for my wife. Why would I give that up to pay for therapy? Yeah. I bet you all weren't expecting to end up at this juncture, were you, my lovely imps? Can you imagine that? Put yourself in the shoes of a, of a religious conservative and you have this huge community that you're a part of that tells you that you that that teaches you about about uh, admittedly a false form of history, a very, very compromised version of history, but nonetheless provides for you. And somebody strolls up and says, Lamau, work more and pay for th and pay for therapy. Yeah. Yikes. So there's the other problem with it. And I think this is a problem that um, that lefties deal with, and but specifically liberals deal with. Um, uh, uh, yes, this is one of the things that I think lefties and especially liberals struggle with. Liberals and lefties do not actually understand, well, some lefties do, but a lot of them don't actually understand community. And I don't entirely blame them. And let me explain why I don't entirely uh, blame them, okay? Um, in our... So, hold on. Let me find the illustrative image. Uh, this right here. Take a look at this. You all have seen some variation of this image, haven't you? The image of, like, American life, and it's like America in a nutshell. And it's just a bunch of advertisements for mcdonald's and and billboards and there's there's just a bunch of fucking concrete everywhere and everybody looks miserable and there's a thousand cars as it turns out the destruction of communities the destruction of communal living is a deliberate ideological push okay um People talk about this as the destruction of the commons, the loss of the commons. Anybody, anybody heard of all of that? Yeah, you, you all have heard this. The, the, uh, the tragedy of the commons, the, the fact that all common spaces are slowly and surely being bought up by private interest and that there's no such thing as sort of communal good anymore. In fact, most people don't know their communities because most people move all the time to get work elsewhere. Um, the commons. Yeah. Um, and it's very interesting um, that in a society where the value of, of, of 
of sort of communal goodness, the value of, of publicly shared things, the value of things that are not owned by anyone, but that are shared by everyone, has been totally and utterly destroyed. Why? Well, because in a world of private property, private ownership and privatization reign supreme. So it, if you just think about it for a second, we live in a capitalist country. Neoliberals are capitalists. Liberals are capitalists. Far-right conservatives don't give a shit about capitalism. They give a shit about religion, and therefore they're totally fine with using capitalism. And because their churches are tax-exempt anyway, they don't care. And meanwhile, liberals who very much believe in the free market and believe in privatization, they're destroying the public commons. They're destroying communities. They are downplaying the value of togetherness. They are downplaying the value of social engagement. What is it? The, uh, the quote from uh, Margaret Thatcher, the ultimate neoliberal, the original neoliberal Margaret Thatcher, uh, there is no, there is no society. There are only individuals and families. Weird. So if we go back and we walk through this, what we see now is we live in a very strange situation where the sort of predominant worldview, the sort of liberal worldview deprioritizes social engagement and connectiveness community engagement and connectiveness to an incredible degree and undermines those things so that there aren't any public there aren't any uh uh, uh public arts programs anymore there aren't any um there are barely any public uh, television projects, pu public radio projects. There's any of these things are gone. Public rec centers, even public parks are disappearing more and more. These are places where people would go to fulfill social needs, to spend time together where they didn't have to pay any money, to counsel one another, to do things together, to build projects together. Community gardens, community rec centers, public arts projects where artists would literally be able to get money to live together and work on projects. Gone. Which means liberals have nothing left but therapy. And conservatives... Well, they're going to keep making their religious com communities just like they always have. They're never going to stop doing that. In fact, they've gotten arguably better at it thanks to the internet. So that's a hell of a predicament, isn't it? Do we really want to accept a world where the only way to survive the despair of your daily life is by talking to a paid therapist? Is that really the world that we think is good? I don't think so. I don't think that that is an anti-religious perspective at all. In fact, I think that's a perspective that simply substitutes uh, uh, psychology for religion, functionally. It literally says that, no, you don't need to find purpose. You just need to go to therapy. No, you don't need socializing. Just go to therapy. No, you haven't been hurt by a demented society that treats people like cogs in a machine on a regular basis. An abusive society. A society that teaches kids from the moment that they're born until the moment that they die that what they are worth is how much money they make at their job. No, no, it's not that. Just go to therapy. Hmm. Guys, I don't even have to go into a critique of psychiatry or modern, or modern psychology or modern therapy to talk about this. And by the way, this is not to say that there isn't value in therapy. In fact, I specifically opened this section talking about... Um, the, the ways that I was benefited by therapy. Therapy can be helpful and is helpful. Therapy is a really useful tool at times, but it isn't a replacement. It shouldn't be a replacement for, for, for robust communities, for communities of peers, for communities of mentors and mentees, 
for communities of people who are organically connected to one another and organically care about each other without having to pay each other for it, without turning it into a transaction. Does that make sense? So it's funny that to a certain degree, I do think that a lot of people who are religious would benefit from some therapy. Some people get lost in religion because they have a lot of trauma that they don't know how to escape and they get pulled into religious communities that do harm to them. But I don't think that you can just say, go to therapy, five head. Yes, intentions nasty. Yes, fan that flame. Sound Judgment says therapy is an invaluable as a tool for helping people in mental distress, but why not actually try and fix societal issues that cause so much mental distress themselves? See, that's the interesting thing too, which is that therapy doesn't even propose to be able to fix all of societal ills, but religions do. Now, I think religions do falsely, but religions offer something that therapy doesn't. And if the world, if capitalism does indeed keep getting worse, if capital, if capitalism gets harsher, which I believe, I genuinely believe there is an overwhelming amount of evidence that this is the case. Mathematically, capitalism is not sustainable. We don't have anywhere else left to exploit. It's only going, we are the whole planet. We've globalized the planet. The only way that we, <laughs> the only way that things go from here is by further exploiting the people that exist on the planet. There's no space. So if that's the case, do we really think that society is going to get better by just having people go to a therapist? Niana says, sorry to repost, but Demon Mom, a lot of modern media is taking on the appearance of being therapeutic. And Kanto, for example. And I'm made very uncomfortable by, about all of our media trying to swaddle up real world problems into therapy, looking meditate mediated realities. It looks like things that can help you, but it, I more feel it's coming to give you the sense of things getting better when they're just there to distract you. I think that's a valid critique as well. But keep in mind that churches don't play, I mean, Therapists don't play fair either, but churches offer a world. They offer a vision. They wrap politics, community, and emotional well-being into one nice tied-up bow, one nice little bundle. And as more and more people are squeezed out of financial well-being, as less people get access to therapists, where are people going to turn? They're not, I mean, some people are just going to die. But others are going to turn to religion out of desperation. That's not a good thing. That's a very bad thing, actually. People flooding into extremist religions in America, the land of cults, is not a good thing. I can tell you this is not a good thing. And you can't fix this with just go to therapy. We have to take a very serious look at what is causing people to live lives of despair don't we? At least I would, I would hope so. I would hope that people would genuinely want to address what the fuck is causing us to talk about society and talk about life as if it's a perpetual march of despair. It's, it's, it's frustrating and it's stressful, but I'm, I'm glad that people are talking about this. I'm glad that people are talking about this, uh, this this tweet and i know there was more discussion as well about this from this same person the state is the ultimate form of mutual aid we are getting everyone to mutually aid each other by force why do anarchists hate it oh damn it boring bait Anarchists genuinely have a child's conception of a welfare state. Leaving non-workers to the mercy of mutual aid or gift economies is a stupid, incomprehensible, and evil idea. By the way, guys, this right here, this sentiment, I know this guy is doing bait shit, but this sentiment right here is exactly why the liberals are going to lose to fascists. Just so you know. That is, that is why liberals are going to lose to fascists, not even to conservatives. That sentiment right there. Because the idea that right now that the welfare state 
is doing anything for fucking anybody when we just went through COVID and the welfare state did jack shit and over a million Americans died from an easily preventable disease? Unironically, this is the sort of thing that leads conservatives to conclude that liberals are brain dead idiots with no connection to the real world. You know that in rural communities during COVID, it was churches. It was churches, community groups, random uh, get togethers of families that made people survive. You do realize that, right? Like, we know where the money from PPP went. The, the, the pandemic protection plan bullshit. That shit all went to corporations, not to people. That went to corporations to ensure that they can keep their workers working. So it really is like, yeah, oh, oh, this is great. Oh, look, Doe mentioned this. Doe is here. Yes, it's definitely the anarchists who are operating on misconceptions here. This is a really funny, it's a really funny thing. I think Doe mentioned this. Hold on, let me explain this. I think Doe... I think I actually retweeted Doe, Doe talking about this. Hold on, let me grab it. Right here. This is it right here, okay? Oh, look. It's about this. When I finally figure out what an anarchist, anarchist state is, it's over for you, bitches. It is funny that even when you're directly pointing out that two frameworks are failing at overlapping, sock dems cannot help themselves from just trying harder to force the failed overlap. I've never had a conversation with a sock dem that didn't go this way. Literally, never. And this is true. Doe nailed it right here by saying that it, that the, the two frameworks are... Notice that in the original tweet, anarchists genuinely have a child's conception of a welfare state. This guy doesn't realize that anarchists don't advocate for a welfare state. That is not how anarchists approach policy... Po politics anarchists are all about building dual power about liberating power from those who would hold it away from you anarchists are about saying no no one gets to tell us what to do even a democratically elected state i've talked about this let me ask you this my 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 skeptics my anarchist skeptics in the audience if it was voted tomorrow by de de democracy, that tomorrow the conservatives took control and they voted that it was okay to kill all trans people. Would you subject, would you go along with that? Would you lay down and die? Would you let your trans, uh, uh, your trans countrymen and women die? The answer is of course no, because as it turns out, just because something is democratic or just because lots of people agree on it, just because a state says something doesn't make it right. Anarchists acknowledge this and say no one ever should have the power to execute, to persecute another group of people. We should build systems that prevent any person from taking that power because every individual and group of individual should be empowered to make decisions for themselves, even if you disagree with them. And what you can see here is once again, the complete failure to grasp what's being said. And by the way, this is not a failure of anarchists. None of these people who talk about this ever try to go and understand what anarchists are talking about. They don't even do the lowest effort. They just project their liberalism poison worldview on the world. So like, I don't know. Do you, do we really think, like, do you think that, are you sold on this idea of a liberal world? How do you guys feel about that? How do you guys feel about a world where, uh, you know, you got to work, you know, two or three gig economy jobs and you have just enough money to go see your therapist every weekend, but you can't afford um, a house that's bigger than a bedroom. You can't afford an apartment uh, without 10 roommates. You can't, um, you can't afford to have a girlfriend because there's nothing to do outside that doesn't cost money. You have to pay, you know, $10 uh, uh, a week for your, your modern Netflix thing. And if you buy a TV, you're guilty because, you know, 
Why would you buy a TV? You should be saving your money. Is that the world you want to do? But every weekend you get to go see your therapist and tell them about how miserable you are. Oh, and the, and the state will provide for you. The state will provide whatever you need. And what you need is categorized as the bare minimum to survive. Do you think that's a good life? Who do you think is going to win between this guy right here? And a conservative who walks up and says, you're hungry? Let me feed you. My God told me to feed you. I was given a divine, a divine message to feed you when you are hungry. We feed all who are hungry. Come with us. We'll give you a bed. We'll teach you the, the ways that we believe in. We'll tell you that our God loves you and that he wants you and he wants you to be a part of us and we want you to be a part of us. Please come help us. We'll give you work to do and you'll have food. Who do you think is going to win? <laughs> Go to your therapist, five head. Or Jesus loves you. Please join us. Which one do you think is going to win? I can tell you which one's going to win. I can tell you which one's winning right now. And I'm an atheist. I'm a pretty staunch atheist. And I can tell you which one's going to win. See, this is the problem with liberals. This is the problem. That This is the reason why. And shh, those of you who've been listening since the beginning, look at how on point and on theme this is. From the very beginning, I talked about the need, the importance for community, the reason why I inspire you all to go out and connect, the reason why I shout about it, right here. Because lefties aren't going to fall for that, guys. This is where we break from the liberals, all of us who are here and beyond. We break from the liberals on this. No more do we just scoff at conservatives being dumb hicks. Instead, we look at the world and we go, why the fuck are, are, is conservative ideology so hateful? What are they trying to build? And how do we build a better world? Because the liberals aren't going to do that. The liberals have their world. This is the liberal world. The liberals' ideal world is the one we're in right now. The one where you can't get your prescriptions without paying out the ass and having to work for six subcorporations of Jeff Bezos. That's the world we live in. We live in their ideal world. Go, just move, five head. Just go to therapy, five head. You stupid, you stupid cunts. Go to therapy, you dumb shits. Meanwhile, you know, they all back these people who get mad at you for not... You know, oh, you're you're miserable. Your therapy isn't helping you address the fundamental emotional issues that are caused from living in a society that just thinks it's okay to let a million people die because it saves some corporations money. You don't think that's a that 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 the the fact that millions of Americans are aware that they live in a country that will let them die while taxing them, while threatening them with punishment under the law. And then we'll let them die to a preventable disease. You don't think that Americans can't see that? They can. But remember, everybody, just go to therapy. There's nothing wrong with this society. There's nothing wrong with the status quo. There's nothing about the status quo that is driving people into apocalyptic churches. You always, when you see people flocking to apocalypse cults, all over the United States, of which there are many now, by the way. QAnon is not the only apocalyptic conspiracy movement. No, cults are thriving in America right now. Even non-Christian cults like Falun Gong are thriving in America right now. Why is that? Does anybody ever ask why that is? Well, liberals don't. Liberals just go, Phew, they're, they're just unwashed. They're just unwashed savages from a red state. That's what, the, that's what, that's what uh, liberals say. Now, there's some truth to some of that. Yes, there are a lot of unwashed uh, fucking Republican savages out there. But let's be real. That's not the reason that there's a lot of conservatives right now. That's not the reason that c Christianity is on the rise again right now. It's because those religions have a history of providing community. They have a history of providing a concrete, uh, a concrete vision of a better future. They make promises and they take material action instead of just scoffing smugly. 
And you all know I'm very harsh to conservatives. You all know that I say very openly every conservative is a fucking liar because they are. Every conservative has to lie. That's part of their ideology. It's it's necessitated. You don't think you're going to get you don't think you're going to bring the dominion of Christianity onto the world without a couple of broken eggs, do you? But that doesn't mean that there aren't reasons tactical, strategic reasons for how these people come into power and how they spread their ideology. And liberals just don't know how to address it. Liberals don't know. They just can't. All they know is scoffing because they've convinced themselves that this is the way the world is supposed to be. Unironically, conservative liberal, or not conservative, uh, capitalist liberals, which is basically all liberals, Capitalist liberals literally think this is the ideal world. They do. If you ask them, they think this is the best the world has ever been and ever will be. You're not going to get much better than minor reforms to capitalism. They think capitalism will spread across the stars until we have enough robots to make us not have to work anymore. And that uh, a, 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 a vision of a, of a better future will only happen because rich people will develop the technology. It's a fantastical worldview and it's a boring worldview. It's a boring worldview that doesn't even sell as well as the old religious narratives. This is funny. Look at this. Oh, we didn't even look at this. Here's a great example. Please tell me your idea for running a scaled welfare state in the 21st century that doesn't sound like the first 10 minutes of Lion King. Hey, maybe we wouldn't need a scaled welfare state if our society didn't force us to all move into a, a, a rotating line of cities that are currently where the tech bubble is. Maybe people would be able to have stability of their own. Maybe communities would have stability of their own if we didn't live in a fucked up, hyper-exploitative, profit-minded, absurd oligarchy. You know, it's funny. They sit here. They sit here. They sit here with this stupid shit telling you that, oh, it sounds like the first 10 minutes of Lion King. You want to sound, you want to hear what sounds like the first 10 minutes of much worse than Lion King? Let's talk about, a, let's do a little charitable summary of the liberal world order. Uh, five guys own more than almost every single person on the planet. And those five guys uh, are Elon, uh, two of those five guys are Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Elon Musk, who spends his days tweeting uh, soy Reddit jokes on the internet while sitting on billions of dollars. As people starve and die, he sits on money tweeting cringe-ass humor. He is one of our gods. The liberal gods. That's the order that they tell, they tell you. And you're telling me that doesn't sound as stupid, as ridiculous as Lion King? Hey, everybody. Uh, let's, let's, let's have an imaginary conversation with a fucking, uh, Let's, uh, let's have an imaginary conversation with an alien. Hello, alien. Uh, alien says, hello, human. And goes, so what's it like where you're from? Hmm. Well, the vast majority of the world lives in abject poverty, but five dudes at the top who we've decided are meritocratically superior to us, um, mostly spend all of their time posting memes and shooting themselves into space for fun. And then the alien goes, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Why do you live like that? Why would you give all that money to five people so they can do silly things like that while the rest of you are starving? And then the liberal goes, I don't know. See, it's capitalism is the most effective si system of economy that has ever existed, I'll have you know. And then the alien goes, I'm getting the fuck out of here. It's just wild. Yeah, and then when the aliens call you a cuck, they're not wrong. Yeah. What a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, guys. Maybe a lot... Have you ever got... Have you guys ever thought that maybe a lot of the solutions proposed by liberals are, uh, are solutions to problems that their own system creates? Like, for example, we need to have a massive welfare state which I would agree would be better than not having a welfare state provided that capitalism is still around. But 
why do you, if somebody says we should get rid of capitalism, why would you respond with, well, how do we build the welfare system that we need because of capitalism if you get rid of capitalism? You you get you get rid of the you get rid of the thing that's causing the horrible need. You stop living in a system that forces people into poverty. That we need the only reason people propose a welfare system is because we live in an economic system that demands tons of people be poor in order to generate demand. Ah. It's very frustrating. And this is why conversations around uh uh around uh communism around alternative economic systems are always very, very difficult because liberals don't even realize how much they've bought into their own ideology. They literally cannot think of a world that is different than capitalism. They just think, well, what do you mean? We can't be anarchists. You can't have anarchist views because that would get rid of the welfare state, the welfare state that we need because of capitalism. Finez Live says, we make the food, we serve the food, we build the houses, we create everything, and yet we get scraps. Interesting how that works. Interesting that increasingly our society aims to divide people from one another, put control into the hands of corporations. Overwhelmingly so. Guys, the gig economy is terrifying. The gig economy means you are you have no one nothing between you and the corporation the algorithm if you aren't if you're starving in the gig economy it's your fault because instead of sleeping you could have been working at uber you could have been working at gribbly you could have been on spermly haven't you thought why well, why didn't you oh oh you you can't pay your rent but you jacked off last night why didn't you use spermly to send that sperm to somebody else you could have been making money, you lazy fuck. Fucking wild, wild shit. Um, yeah, I think that more or less, uh, more or less settles uh, this particular issue. No, I don't think that uh, therapy replaces religion. I don't think that having a therapist replaces religion. And I don't think that saying so is a particularly good tactic. In fact, it's kind of a stupid thing to say that seems very underbaked and mostly designed to just make people mad which i mean congratulations you've made people mad but you've also validated exactly what conservatives say about liberals you know at the same time you did make a lot of people mad but you also did so in a way that specifically <laughs> empowers conservatives position <laughs>